Halo episode. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I can't even get two words out. If you keep that, I'll matter be the bit. That'll be exactly. <laughs> Hail, Internet. It's Paul. It's Matt, the Dork Lords. We're here talking about The Mandalorian. Season 1, Episode 2, The Child. Uh, all right, this is a very short episode. Um, like the child. Like the child, short. Uh, I think it's actually, with, if you take the credits out, I think it's actually under 30 minutes. Wow. But uh, essentially, it's three fights. Uh, each different in its own way. Mm. Uh, each pretty cool, in fact. Mm. Um, and, uh, and we have the Mandalorian finally gets off of the planet at the end of the episode. Yes, he does. Uh, so this is a planet... Uh, Centric episode. Uh, the planet is actually Arvala Seven. Just uh, so you know, I had to look that up. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not Tatooine. It's not Jakku. It's another desert planet. Yes, probably a lot better than the sixth one. Uh, right, Arvala okay. Six. No, mm -hmm. um, uh, that blows. Uh, what was it? Um, Botany Bay. <laughs> um, so yeah, all right. Uh, it, the first battle involves. Uh, they're attacked by bounty hunters. Yes. Mandalorian, he's got this, you know, the uh, the baby bassinet, the levitating bassinet is attached to his, somehow like connected to his wrist. Yeah. He's like, doo -doo -doo -doo, and it just follows him around handily. Yeah. Um, and when trouble comes, he'll do this little whoosh, whoosh, and like <laughs> send it away, which is kind of fun to watch. Um, yeah. So he's trying to keep the baby alive. These bounty hunters attack. But what's interesting is they go for the kid big time. Yes. Even like, oh, I know you're still attacking me, but I'm going to turn around and run for the kid and try to kill the kid off. Uh, um, and, you know, he sees that they've got the little tracking fobs. So he has expertly hand-to-handed them off, but he realizes, oh, okay, there are more bounty hunters sure. being sent, yeah. and their mission is to kill this kid. So as long as I've got this kid with me, um, probably me and the kid are both in, in real risk. I mean, that's, that seems logical to assume that he thinks that. Yeah. We don't know what he thinks. That's true. We don't, <laughs> we don't know what he thinks. The robot that is <laughs> the Mandalorian. The, no, but he's, when he the sees mute, the fob, no, I think seeing speak. the fob. Uh, yeah, he sees it. But yeah. So you could assume that he realizes you know, what the implications of that are. So you could also... He may know implications that we're not aware of. That's true. That's true. But you could take that also to s suggest that that's a... That's kind of almost like a moral neutral reason for turning the baby in. You know, the, uh, looking after the baby's welfare is one thing, but it's also the idea of like, the longer I don't turn this baby in, the more I'm going to be getting attacked over mm. and over mm. and over mm. again. Mm. So mm. I probably should speed this process up. Mm. Apparently that's the last, though, of the bounty hunters in this episode. That's true. That's true. He, I was. I kept waiting. We're like, oh, is it gonna? While they're doing the montage yes. of the shipbuilding, <laughs> yeah. it's like, and suddenly, oh crap! Now we're all underneath. Um, but he's fended them all off. Yes, he's had a. There's a. There's a break in the bounty hunterdom. Uh, but having successfully defeated bounty hunters, uh, he arrives back at his ship to find it's being stripped for parts yes. by Jawas. Yes. And he starts picking them off. Yes. <laughs> uh, disintegrating them. Uh, I think that harkens to the line um, from uh, Empire Strikes Back when Darth Vader says to Boba Fett, no disintegrations. Maybe uh, he's referring to a weapon that right. disintegrates as uh, opponents. Okay. Um, either that or maybe Thanos had just done the thing and they're all turning into dust. Yeah, could half be. the universe, could be. half the Jawa disappear. Yeah. So uh, you better look out in case, you know, once, um, look, five years later. Yeah, good point. It's <laughs> so going to be a... All those Jawas are just come, come back. back. Yeah, right. <laughs> the exact same spot. <laughs> he shoots a bunch of them. They get into their sand crawler and take off. Um, I really enjoyed this uh, fight set piece um, because, yeah, we've seen this thing in, you know, a lot of the, uh, especially New Hope. Um, yes. And to see it as a vehicle on which there is an attack happening yeah. is kind of cool. Yeah. Um, so he's climbing up, they're throwing stuff yeah. at him, <laughs> which is very, tr like, it harkens back to actual, you know, Earth history where when, when invaders would attack castles, the castle... Folks at the castle would throw anything they could yes. at these folks. Yes, be, you know, they would throw a dinner plate at them, whatever. Yes. So he's <laughs> gets up to the top, 
and then they're all waiting there and they stun him and there's so much uh, I guess his armor can only deflect so much I, I guess yeah I, wonder, yeah I wonder how lethal it would have been without his armor yeah, just he's a lot of guns on him but you know yeah. apparently it's and that's all yeah, yeah well, you know, it knocks him out um, we do get the sense that the Jawas uh, while you know devious in their own way are not like I forgot the comment that um, Nick Nolte's character makes but he says something like, they are not, they were not pirating, but they will try, I forgot how he put it, but yeah. basically like, they're not evil, well, they're just like, opportunity to they're not lawful, <laughs> they're chaotic, <laughs> chaotic neutral. There you go. Um, so. Well, yes, I mean, you could tell throughout their interaction, um, when he uh, used a flamethrower on one of them, they just, <laughs> they just brush it off, you know? <laughs> yeah, he falls a long way, I lands on his back, you're like, oh. Mm. Um, but his armor is apparently yeah, yeah. good it's enough. Really good armor, boy. It's good. He use it in the professional football or something. Anyway, so he's lying there, and you can see that little moment where uh, our little, our baby. I call it baby Yoda, but it's not baby Yoda. No, it's not. Whatever. The baby Yoda, like the child. Yes. The the child is you know interested in his welfare. I think from mm. the from the. The, the looks we get. Again, right. we don't get a lot of dialogue to figure stuff out in this, but I think the baby is, like, concerned. Hmm? Huh? Yes. Huh? And when he finally sits back up, it's like, ah, thank goodness. Yes. My guardian is still around. Mm. Our hero decides, oh, the only person I know on this planet is Nick Nolte. Yes. <laughs> and so they start 48 hours. And it's great. He's got 48 <laughs> hours to get off the plane. No, okay, no. Um, so, you know, there's this long trek across the desert with this baby in tow. Um, we, you know, then a little meeting. During the meeting, we the baby... Uh, oh, uh, he's trying to fix him. That was yes, 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 yes. So yes. he's trying to... He's got a bad injury, and he's... Uh, it's like cauterizing it, I guess. So it's like, it looks painful. Yeah, it does. And baby keeps coming out of the bassinet. <laughs> yes, it is. Um, given what we find out later, which, you know, we guessed might be the case, sure. and is the case, sure. uh, that it has force abilities. It's possible that had he allowed the baby to touch him, it might have actually healed him. Yeah, I guess... Um, uh I'm not as up on Star Wars as some, but I guess it hasn't been definitively established that there's force healing. I mean, there have been a few times, like even in The New Hope there, where when Luke's been attacked and Obi-Wan sees him in the desert, there's not like a definitive, and now I'll use force healing on you, but maybe you can imply that he did. But, but you're right. I think force healing is not necessarily a, 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 a factoid as of yet. Um, but there was an implication that that was the intent, at least, of right. our baby. Our yes. baby thought, I yes. think I could help him. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, presumably, you let her, you know, maybe that's how he... All those other... Oh, that's true. <laughs> I'll, I'll kill the weak one now. <laughs> <laughs> I have no powers. Uh, <laughs> mm. uh, yes, much like the Mandalorian, uh, baby doesn't talk. Yes. Or cry well, or anything. So they're good for each other. They're a match. I mean, they could go hours <laughs> without any vocalizations whatsoever. Yes. Uh, we do see it. Finally, the baby eats something. Yes. Um, it eats a live frog. We then have Nick Nolte. I'm calling him Nick Nolte. I think his name is Queel in the show. But Nick, the, the, yeah. the creature voiced by Nick Nolte uh, be, decides to act as like a an ambassador on behalf of the Mandalorian to try to get his parts back. Yes. They go back, they meet with the Jawas, he has to like put his guns away, including the blaster. Like it's kind of, that's a nice little moment there. Where it's like, <laughs> I'm a Mandalorian, it's my religion. <laughs> yeah, if you want your parts. Um, so they, the Jawas interestingly ask for his armor. It's the first thing they're like, all yep. right, we'll take his armor. Yep. Uh, and that's not gonna happen. Yep. Uh, which again, we see how important that is and how much it's valued even by non-Mandalorians. It's like, oh, that stuff. Um, and so then they ask for the baby. That's not going to happen. No. So they ask for the egg, the Duga, I believe is what they Oh, call it. Uh, Duga, thank you. Duga, thank you. These Duga. words are very important. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yes, they are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is... I think um, 
McCracken makes a very good Guga. <laughs> you know, McClunky. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to have to put another McClunky reference at the end of this episode, I think. So I want to find the perfect scene to insert a McClunky. Ah, okay. Um, that sounds, all right. That's Very yet good. to be the scene. But you'll know when you watch this. Well, McClunky goes <laughs> to, <laughs> to get the egg. Uh, the egg is the egg of this creature. I think they call it a mud horn. I'm just giving you all the names. Sure, yeah, there you go. The, uh, now, what was that thing you thought it would have been? Oh, right. Um, I was thinking it might be the one-horned uh, creature from Attack of the Clones right. in the gladiatorial combat. It's not that. What was that? That's called a... Okay, whatever. It I'm wasn't that. Fire, fire, fire. It was not that. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's a, it looks very different. Okay. I think, first first of all, the fact that it has the woolly hair is... Uh, it's, um, uh, but, uh, big fight. Maybe they shaved them. Yeah, maybe good point. Maybe that's what it is. It's a shaven mud horn. Uh, it is. Uh, it's it's winning in its yes. fight. Yes. Versus our hero. Yes. Uh, he gets he gets knocked around quite quite a bit. Actually, I remember as I watch it, I was wincing a little bit. Like oh, mm-hmm. and that one in particular where it just smashes him yeah. into the mud. You're like oh, yeah. His armor's all torn up. Uh, and so at the critical moment, it's coming for him. All he's got left is his little knife. But he's going to hold it out ready. Yeah, he tries. Yeah. And uh, Baby brings in the Yoda powers. Yeah, he does. And so levitates our Mudhorn, mm-hmm. much like Yoda levitated uh, the ship. Fair. Uh, about the same weight, probably. <laughs> now, the ship's probably more I would heavy hope. than that, but it's still. I would a, hope. It's heavy. Yes, no, it is heavy. Yeah. Uh, and so, what I liked about that scene, first of all, it's like, oh, it's a big reveal. But also, then uh, he just stabs it with a little knife and kills yes. it. Yes. Like, that was just. Yes. I assume what. Yeah, that was intentional. The idea, I think, of like, you know, even the biggest thing, if you know how to attack it. Yeah. And a Mandalorian probably would know, mm. perhaps. Oh, on a mud horn, the <laughs> artery runs the through the side. Anyway, mm-hmm. so he stabs it in just the right place. Yes. Kills it instantly. Yes. Uh, our baby passes out from the exertion of levitating. I think, and what's interesting is, at least in the few sentences we get when he when he's uh, talking to Nick Nolte. Yes. Neither he nor Nick Nolte seem to. Guess that it might be the force, right? Like that would be one would think almost your first. Well, but the force has been gone for a while for most people. Now, uh, Luke and Leia still have the force and are still alive, but generally, you know, since Order sixty six, there's not a whole lot of Jedi around. Maybe for, the force is not as well known. Okay, we know that by the time a Force Awakens, they're like, oh, it's just a. I thought it was a myth or whatever. You know, so maybe it's just. Do like, we? Oh. I mean, did he? Really, I feel like um, the incident happened when, when Nick Nolte wasn't around. <laughs> and then he gets back to him and he said, what happened? And he's like, I can't explain it. And then that, I feel like that was all that was said. Okay. I got the feeling that they had, based on the conversation tidbit we got, that there had been more to that conversation. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, because I think it's Nick Nolte initiates that talk. Like, so, yes. uh, is the child still, is the child okay? And he's like, well, physically... But uh-huh. I got the the opinion that perhaps he said, "Oh yeah, the the kid did a thing, the, the thing levitated, mm. the kid passed out." Right. Anyway, but it just they it did not it did not occur to either one of them okay. that it was the force. It seemed like. Um, but uh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> FYI. <laughs> um, so then there's the montage of fixing the ship because we find out that. Nick Nolte, actually, even though he's all like, no, Blurg and only Blurg, <laughs> yes, exactly. he's actually really yeah. skilled yes. at putting together spaceships from just like a total mess of parts. Yes, exactly. You know, and the Mandalorian thought they needed to have a special location, a special, like, you know, uh, outfit to, to help them do it. And, and uh, he's like, oh, no, I'll help you. And yeah, they. Yeah, that's a good point. There's no way we could possibly no, put this together. Oh, no, what do you mean? Like, yeah. No, it's parts. It's just parts. Put <laughs> yeah. it together. Yeah, what? Cool. Yeah. Um, and so that was actually a really interesting moment was Mandalorian offers this guy a job. Yes. First, he thanks him. He's like, I'll split half the money with you. Uh, no. 
And they're like, look, I could use a person of your talents, which is probably true, yeah. right? The guy yeah. was like, Shh. and then he says, you know, I'm I've got a big movie career, I gotta, so <laughs> I can't, you know, be spending a lot I'm of time. I've been twenty-four hours too, yeah. so I got to come back now. Um, but I thought that was interesting because I, in my my vi- my version of the Mandalorian until that moment was like, I'm a loner by choice, right? And that's probably still at least partially true. But here he was willing. If they, if Nick Nolte says, sure, okay, I think he probably gets another crew member. Sure. Yeah? Yeah. So it's just interesting that, I mean, it suggests that perhaps he had a crew once upon a time, or who knows, but like, mm. that he's not necessarily just like, no, I never work with anybody. If the right person comes along and he oh. feels like he trusts them, sure, yeah, you're yeah. like, okay, yeah, yes, join my crew. Yes. It's just a little, it's a little different character arc beat than I thought that I uh, knew about this character. Okay, all right. I thought he was like Lone Gunman, right? You know, the guy that from the Western. Right, like, right, right. I do my own thing. Right, no, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah, we, there's not a lot to know so about his past, so we'll find out more. Right, I think um, I mentioned I feel this. like uh, there's going to be people who are in more than one episode. <laughs> you think maybe Nick Nolte comes back around, in other words? No, I think there'll be other characters who oh. aren't as big shoddy as Nick Nolte. It's possible Nick Nolte. Nolte comes back around. Yeah, for like an episode or, yeah. you know, but you'd have to go back to that planet, which I think is probably not likely at all. Yeah, I think you're right. I think so we're done with the planet. I think we're done with the planet, and I think we're done with him since he is where he wants to be. We so, do get the feeling, I mean, from the, again, the limited dialogue we get, I if I were to put in a backstory for Nick Nolte's character, he obviously had some kind of technical training once upon a time. Right. But then he settled on this place to try to just get away from it all. Yeah. So, so I'm hoping that the rest of the series really opens it up in terms of um, one, that we have some characters that stick around for more than one episode other than Mandalorian. And two, that we get to see him perhaps um, out of his element. Out of having to go on these sort of planes and uh, hunt down people. Now that he's got this, uh, he's you know responsibility for this child. That uh, maybe they you know have him go in different kind of situations. Well, and as I mentioned to you, the you know I care for what I'm wished for here because I I don't want this to be a three men and a baby <laughs> scenario where it's like Mandalorian has to clean up a baby. Well, but on the other hand. It's going to be, like, that's going to be, like, a bit, but obviously it's not going to be the majority yeah. of it. Well, there's going to be a lot of, we want to kill him now, and yeah. now we want to kill him. <laughs> yeah. And this let's, episode, we want to kill let's him. Let's keep baby safe. <laughs> yeah. But it is, I mean, like, they've, they've thrown it. It's, it's, not that, it's not that the kid is, like, five. He's 50, actually, technically. But it's an yeah. infant. It's <laughs> He's a, ten it times a, older than it's that. It's a defenseless <laughs> infant. And so if you're going to introduce that concept, and he's going to be... I mean, days have already gone by in in his you know time, and so how many weeks? Who knows how long he's gonna have to like keep track of this kid? You gotta, you know, the kid has to live, right? <laughs> and the kid's gotta eat. I assume that bassinet. Who knows what it's filled with at this point? Uh, yes. In terms of uh, waste products, um, so you know, there's the fact that here's this Mandalorian Maybe he's trained in martial on. arts. But he's not necessarily trained in... Maybe that's the fuel of the bassinet. Keeping a kid alive. It's like, poof! Oh, now it has more fuel. Yeah, no, yeah. good point. Yeah. Kind of like uh, Futurama. Ah. Uh, oh, he poops uh, rocket fuel. Uh, there you go. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, one thing that was interesting was, so after he, he uh, successfully gets the egg, returns it to the Jawas, they just chop the top off and eat the yolk. Yep, that's what they do. Um, and so with that, that to me seemed almost like a little... Like a little metaphor for uh, the Mandalorian, you know, the note to self. <laughs> the big mission I'm on is go get this egg <laughs> and bring it back to these people. Uh, probably they're not going to have good designs on whatever I bring back. And so maybe no. like, he thinks that like Jawa's taking the infant and killing it for their own sustenance. You could imagine that perhaps... I don't know. There's a clue in the idea of like maybe that when I bring this infant back to Werner Herzog, uh, it, 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 not that they're going to eat it, but that it's like <laughs> its welfare probably won't be looked yeah. after. Because I think that's what we're headed to is a moment when, um, you know, its welfare is going to be in question. And, and he's obviously, well, sure. not obviously, I, I'm guessing he is, he is feeling a uh, 
connection to this child because he remembers himself as an orphan. Because of that light that was on his helmet? Because of the light on his helmet. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see the way he was moving his arms? Well, it was interesting. <laughs> they, they, there was a symmetry in the scenes to when, when he closes the bassinet. Yes. Uh, looking down at the baby. Yes. It's very similar to his flashback of him as a little kid when his parents closed him. Oh, in. interesting. I think so. Mm. Anyway. But, but yes, as far as his actual emotions, <laughs> we do not know. We do not know. It could know. simply be, I want to bring this child in alive and fast. Yes. Because alive is more money. And fast means I don't have to be fighting a whole bunch of dudes along the way. Right. I mean, you know, I yeah, feel safe to say that he has some affinity or feels some responsibility since that would create more plot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm an emotionless dick. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It'd be interesting oh. if this season was just like, oh, yeah, we had a couple of episodes with this little uh, child and it was gone. And it was gone. <laughs> now, that said, I mean, um, so, okay, one one. one thing we've seen is that the doctor, this Dr. Pershing from the episode one, people have seen that there's an insignia on his arm, which is connected to the Kaminoans, which is the cloning facilities back from the prequels. And so there's a theory that perhaps either the intention is to clone this little baby creature, which obviously has force powers, or that maybe this creature is a clone of Yoda or something. Um, in any case, that there's maybe some cloning Sure. thing happening Why not? Um, let's get some cloning if that's the case I I think the big issue will be whether the child is in danger or not so for instance in the prequels when right. Django Fett gets cloned he doesn't die in the process I mean he, he has a kid and has a life and he's like fine take a little swab out of my cheek or whatever right so I think if that was the case if if it's just Mandalorian handing over kid so that they can clone it and it goes about its life I think he would do that Mm, I yeah, think sure. Give me my cash. I'm gonna right. add to my armor. So I think it's got to be a, oh, in order to do what we want to do, we have to dissect this thing sure, or yeah. something. You know, do something terrible. Right. To yeah. The baby. Yeah. Um, so yeah. I wonder if there's going to be a faction, um, either uh, that the uh, scientist is associated with, that will like, okay, now we have get get it to this other place where it will be safe. Um, or if there's uh, perhaps another group that like wants to uh, attack them based on wanting to save the child, and then he would have to go with them. Do you think maybe a situation where he'll turn the baby in and then have to rescue it again? Will there be like a constant, <laughs> where's the kid? That's certainly a possibility. You know. Yeah. Um, we do see this fact that the that that Werner Herzog. Well, we don't know it's Werner Herzog. Someone from the guild is. Approving bounties to kill right. this kid, right. even though uh, you know there's these other bounties where they don't want him dead. Right. So uh, it seems like competing interests. There. Yeah, and we yeah. already saw competing interests between Werner Herzog and the Doctor. Right. Um, so I'm guessing if I had to go theory craft moment. Ooh, theory craft. Does some two episodes. All right. First of all, it seems like the Empire is kind of they're kind of bigots when it comes to like humans first. Sure. Our stormtroopers are all. Right. People about this height. Or whatever. Sure, yeah, yeah. So I don't think it would be a, we're going to make a little Yoda army. No. So I don't think they're just going to clone little Yodas and then have to right. retrofit all their spaceships. And, yeah, right. Yeah. So uh, if I had to guess, they're going to try to somehow take, take the, the force out of the kid. Uh, like, I'll take whatever the midi chlorians what, are. What makes midi chlorians? So, yeah, whatever. Uh, yeah. Whatever. You know, find um, that. Find that uh, biological. Whoop, sure. We'll take the little, inject it into our soldiers, yes, yes, yes. and they will then have force powers, perhaps. Yeah. Um, and that perhaps there is a group of the old guard, a la Werner Herzog, who has that line before. He's like the natural of order of things, and like he seems very kind of old school sure. bigot guy. <laughs> yes, know. yes. That maybe he's like that's a bad idea. Yeah. I don't want. Uh, I don't want soldiers having like force powers and then they could just sure. turn on us and kill us all. Yeah. So better just to not have any force users around. Let's kill the baby before it can make, uh, they make real problems. <laughs> yeah. So that's kind of my thought is maybe where that's coming mm, from. Could be. Um, any thoughts? Uh, no, I mean, it was all possible. I mean, there's, there's just so little to go on. Yeah. So, yeah, it, you know, it's interesting to see, um, to compare this to the other series we're watching, one of the other series, which is Watchmen where um, it has, I would say, 
uh, probably a less rich uh, sort of history to draw on because I think I would say there's probably a lot more Star Wars books and sure, cartoons sure, sure. and stuff yes. like that than Watchmen. But this one is not giving a lot, you know, not nearly as much as uh, tightly uh, plotted as, say, Watchmen is. So I feel like. Um, well, there's also a bunch of clones in Watchmen. They're doing cloning. That's true, They're yeah. doing cloning there too. They are too. They're yeah. Clone a baby Yoda in that yeah. one. Yeah. So you know, uh, it's wide open in terms of, uh, and I think it's um, uh, taking a lot from the um, uh, the genre of western. And you know, their hero doesn't talk a lot. You know, and and they're not really all this time going from place to place and everything. It's uh, yeah, it's very it's very sparse. So we've seen two episodes now and the face has not been revealed. That's true. So uh, So yeah, what what, what, what is the your clock's bet? Running? Yeah, what is your bet? I think I don't think it's an I don't think it's an episode I think there's eight episodes total. Sure. If I'm not mistaken. Right, so six so, left. So I don't think it's an episode eight thing. I think it's uh-huh. a little earlier than that. Okay. I'm gonna go with I'm going to go with late episode six or episode seven. Can I get that? Can I get like like a, an episode oh. and a half? Oh, 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 So oh, I'm, oh. I'm, I'm putting an episode and a half in there of when I think Right, 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 right. Um, okay. Uh, I want to say uh, four. Wow. Yeah. All right, all right. Do it early. Yeah. Ish. Like, well, it's uh, halfway. It's halfway. Yeah. Halfway. Yeah. Or late three, even. Um, I really wanted to see, you know, I feel like, I mean, it, it does have a certain appeal if it never happens. It's true. And once you commit a certain way, you might as well commit all the way. I, a certain appeal. But I'd rather see the um, them decide to do it for specific reasons, specific ways. Because otherwise, you know, like as we were saying or whatever, it's like, you know, what... That's not practical. <laughs> right. Not practical from the never and taking, life, you know. Outside of the 30 minutes we see this guy, he has to live another however many, 23 and a half hours yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Depends on your planet. But, yeah, uh, yeah he's yeah. got to eat and sleep yeah. and yeah. bathe. And, yeah. like, yeah. come on. You're not wearing yeah, that. Yeah, what I would time. want is, or to help explain it, is... Um, Somebody who's not a Mandalorian or whatever, like, oh, here's my helmet. Let me put it on. <gasps> it's great in here. You know, then take it off. Then they look really better after they take it off too. Like, you know, like, or it's, like oh. a, it's like a it's like a TARDIS helmet. Yeah. It's much bigger inside. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, look at this. I've got like a little it's pantry like, in here. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. So, got movie screens. Yes, exactly. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. So uh, that will be interesting. Put if you've got a thought for when and or if we will see Pedro yes. Pascal's actual face uh, in this uh, season. I'll put it down in the comments. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah. we ready? All right. Sure. Uh, thanks so much, everybody. We'll be back talking about uh, Watchmen, Mr. Robot. Throw a little Tolkien there uh, sure. for good measure, sure. and uh, we'll talk to you soon. Bye, everybody. Your overconfidence is your weakness. Your faith in McClunky is yours.